Hallelujah. Thank the Lord. That's good singing. Good song. Good singing. All right. Let's open the Bible to Genesis chapter number 8, please. Everybody get your Bibles open there. Genesis chapter number 8. Once again, don't miss that service tonight. It's going to be real special. You'll learn something and be blessed at both at the same time. And that's what real preaching is supposed to do. You're supposed to be helped and encouraged. You're supposed to learn something too. And so that'll be tonight at 6 o'clock. And then, of course, Wednesday, our regular Wednesday night service, we have a tremendous time. Bring all the kids. Leave Thursday morning, 8.30, going to Virginia. We need some help on visiting Saturday since most of us will be gone. And our two bus captains gone. And so uh, two out of four. So we need help to fill in the spots, okay? Uh, Genesis chapter number 8. Now, here in the book of Genesis chapter 8, you're, you're right after the flood. The flood comes chapter 6, chapter 7, and uh, the waters came down, and Noah and his three sons get out of the ark to go out and start in the brand new world that they had never seen before. Can you imagine that? Look at uh, verse number 15, Genesis 8, 15. And God spake unto Noah, saying, Go forth of the ark, thou and thy wife, and thy sons, and thy sons' wives with thee. Hold your finger there just a second. There was eight people in the ark. If you know anything about Bible numerology, you know that the number eight stands for what? New beginning. New beginning. You're, you're doing good. Most people don't know that. Seven is completion. Six is man. No, that's six, six, six. That's Antichrist. Seven is completion. Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Start all over again. Eight is new beginning. Do on that piano. Do re mi fa so la ti. That's it. Name the seven. That's complete. Do. That second do is the same as that first do. Do, re, mi, fa, so, la, ti, do, 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 do. See? I don't know that. <laughs> it's true. It's, it's an octave up from the first. Everything in seven. Seven basic colors. Every painting you've ever seen in the world. It was basic seven colors. And so eight stands for new beginning. Starting all over again. Eight people come out of the ark when they come out. Now look what he said here. Look what the Lord said to him in verse 9, chapter 9, verse 1. Chapter 9, verse 1. And God blessed Noah and his sons and said unto them, Be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth. Now, think about this. The world had millions of people on it at that time. And it had got so bad the wickedness of man had got to the point where God finally said, I've, I've had, I'm done with this. It's, I've had it. I'm going to wipe man off of the face of the earth. Can you imagine that? We'll talk a little bit more about that tonight, why he did that. When the sons of God, daughters of men, those giants were in the earth and it got corrupt. You know what it said? It said that the thoughts of man's heart was only evil continually. That means people couldn't even think without thinking dirty thoughts. Does that remind you of any generation here around here lately? Everything has to be made into a dirty joke. Everything has to be made into something suggestive or wicked. You can't. Every, every, that's, all, that's how comedians make their money. Talking dirty and people laughing at them. They ain't no count. They can't make, they're not really funny. They have to talk dirty to get a laugh. You have to cuss to get somebody to laugh at you. You're not a good comedian. Uh, but Barney didn't cuss and he had a lot of them. Yeah. Amen. Uh, but anyway... Uh, you know what? These guys, they got so wicked that God finally said, I'm done with this. I'm destroying the world. It's over. Wipe it out with a flood. All the houses, gone. All the farms, gone. All the vehicles they had, wagons, gone. Everything, gone. Crops, gone. Animals, gone. Except what they took on the ark. And when they stepped out of that ark, after being in that thing over a year, they stepped out there, and there it was. Completely uninhabited. Can you imagine that? 
The only thing that creepeth on the earth is alive is what you had in that boat. The whole world. It was a worldwide flood. There's evidence of it all over the world. Scientists don't never get it caught up right. And they, they went out and they looked and they saw that. Can you imagine Noah? Can you imagine that? I'm, I can't even fathom in my mind walking out. Uh, he's had three boys. One was Shem, one was Ham, one was Japheth. Them boys went to found three different continents. That's where everybody in the world come from. Everybody in the world from one of them three boys. There are there are relatives way way on back. Japheth went north into Russia, up in that area, up in Finland, England, uh, and inhabited that uh, that part of the world. Or Shem went east, and out of China, Asia, all that. Ham went south, Africa, and the southern part of the world. Those three boys produce all the people in the world, including me and you. We're a, a mixture thereof. And so everything was gone. Everything was gone. And you know what Noah did? He came out and the first thing he did was build an altar. First thing he did. It's what he said. He went forth, his sons, he built an altar. He didn't say he built a house. He built an altar. He didn't build a school. He built an altar. He didn't build a business. He built an altar. The first thing he did when he came out of the earth. Or out of the ark. On the new earth. Now, I'm preaching this morning on this thought. Starting over. Starting over. Somebody's here today that needs this really, really bad. Somebody's here today that needs to do this on a regular basis. And there's some people here this morning that... Just need to do it right here today. There's people in this room today that need to wipe the slate clean and start over. It's a biblical principle. Now, have you ever noticed? I mean, I'm glad. I'm glad God fixed everything so that we can start over. I'm glad it's not so sort of like if, if you if you if you fall, you can't get back up and try it again. I'm glad everything's like that. Do you know? I'm glad there's a new day. I'm glad that there's a new day. I really am. It's good sometimes when you go to bed and your head just all full of stuff and worries and burdens and problems and, and you sleep for a little while and you wake up saying, new day. I'm ready to start all over. I, I can do this. Amen? Amen. You, you know, I'm, ain't you glad God made it like that? What if, what if life was just one long big day and there never was no night time and you didn't sleep? We didn't sleep. God didn't have to make it like that. You say, well, that's... If you see if somebody believes in evolution, that's a good question to ask them. Did, did we evolve to need sleep? <laughs> we went backwards. Uh, the, here's the, I mean, here's the earth. It gets dark. Isn't it sort of odd to you that it gets dark the same amount of sleep we need? Eight, ten hours, nine, six, five, four, something. Ain't that, ain't that, you think that's just an accident that the Lord lets it get dark for eight or nine hours? And we just so happen to need sleep. Let's ask an evolutionist this at school or college. Did we evolve to need sleep because it gets dark? Or did we already need sleep and the universe evolved to get dark to accommodate us needing sleep? I'd love to ask them about the questions like that. Which came first, chicken or the egg, buddy? Hey, man, did sleep come before darkness or darkness come before sleep? Right? I guess that's a blue right some over some of y'all's head, but if you can think, uh, think about it. we didn't. You say, well, it's just that way. The world spins and gets dark. God could have made another sun on the other side and made it stay daylight all the time, right? He could have fixed it. So you know why He did that? It's a picture of death, burial, and resurrection, and it's also a picture of starting over. Thank God, a new day. It's a new day. The Bible said God's mercies are new every morning, and I. Brother Danny has the great privilege of telling this congregation this morning and the thousands of people that are watching online that God has given you a chance to start all over with your life today, this morning. Thank God. Thank the Lord. Hallelujah. That's why God let us get dark. I'm glad, like in sports, we play a ball game. See? Let's say we play this ball game and uh, we, we, uh, uh, we, we lose 75 to 60. Lost, 75, 60, game over. Ah. Now, we got another ball game Tuesday night. 
ain't you glad that we don't say, all right, start the new game. What's the score? 75, 60. It don't just keep going. You get to start over. Zero. Zero to zero. Boy, wouldn't it be discouraging if you was in a sport and you lost that last game or lost that last contest and then you had to start off in the same place you was in the last of that one? We all start off all over again. You know what we did this morning? Everybody in here got up. We're all on level ground. You can make a good day or bad day. You can do right or you can do wrong. But I thank the Lord this morning for His marvelous grace and that we can start all over again. Sometimes I wake up and uh, like somebody said this, said, uh, I don't, you don't, they don't wake up and say, good morning, Lord. They wake up and say, good Lord, it's morning. I don't know. I don't know if that's your life or not, but uh, I hope not. Amen. Now we we. It's, I'm glad we can start over. Adam started over. You will see a story of a that could be discouraging. Adam and Eve, man. Adam and Eve was in the Garden of Eden in a perfect environment. We can't even imagine that. Imagine that. I don't. And, and also, we don't know how long Adam and Eve stayed there before they fell. Could have been a good while. We don't. Nobody knows that that I that I know. And he here's Adam and Eve living in a perfect environment, sleeping on a bed of lilies at night. No mosquitoes to bite you. No gnats. You talk about keeping perfect temperature all the time. Now you know what you you know what'll happen if you go camping now. As soon as you get your tent set up and everything all dressed up, it's going to come a bad storm and rain on you. <laughs> And your clothes are going to be soggy uh, while you lay in the mud all night to convince yourself you're having fun. And, uh, and you know, and catch one fish. And you know what? Uh, they didn't have it like that. Adam and Eve made in the Garden of Eden. Can you imagine if you went and talked to them? How you doing, Adam? I'm doing fine. There's no other way to do. Uh, you got any problems? No. What's a problem? Do you ever... Sweat? What's that? I don't know what sweat is. Do you ever feel bad? No. No. What do you do? Anything I want to. Got any bills to pay? No. Got any hurt problems? Anybody dying? Right? No. How about you, E? You all right? I sure am. <laughs> she, she, uh, does, how about you and Adam? Y'all getting along all right? Does he love you? Why, he thinks I'm the only woman in this world. <laughs> Eve, you, I mean, can you imagine that? Think about that, y'all. That's the best I can do on my feminine side. I ain't got no feminine side. <laughs> Don't want one. Now look here. Can you imagine that? Then they sin. Man, you can really mess up a good thing by sinning, can't you? Yep. Amen. 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 You can really blow it by sinning, y'all. You talk about messing up a good situation. You can do it, sin. And when they sinned and ate that fruit, God came and He cursed the serpent. You know that story. Some people on, on these YouTube videos, some scientists got on his girl's body and said, why did, why did God punish the serpent by making it crawl on its belly when that's what it does? Oh, that poor, poor little nut ain't got no business to teach in college. Crazy. He, he needs to be in kindergarten and nursery back there learning his ABCs. Or what about the Bible? Listen, y'all, the, the serpent didn't curl on its belly to begin with. It was a beautiful creature, probably winged, all perfect. And God cursed it and put it on its belly. Adam and Eve were cursed. You know what God told Adam? Adam, you got now you got to work. What's that? Well, you'll find out when you get hungry enough here in a little bit. you got to dig in the ground. And when you dig in the ground, you've got to put a seed in there, and it's going to come up, and you can get some taters out of, that, out of that ground. Or you can grow you some corn. Or you can grow some tomatoes or onions or, or whatever. And he said, I got, he said, you got to do it. And, he, and Adam goes out there, and he sticks that shovel in that ground. And all of a sudden, it starts dripping off his face. He said, I know. what the, This is sweat. Now, and the Lord said, you've got to make your living by the sweat of your face. Now, you know why people go to college? People go to college so they don't have to do that. They said, I'm going to go to college and get me a good job where I can sit in an air-conditioned office all day long and I won't have to sweat. And then you get high blood pressure and you have to go to the gym and sweat and pay for it three times a week or die. You ain't going to beat God. He wants you to sweat. 
He wants everybody in here to sweat. Good for you. Get the poison out of you. Keep from getting sick. Good, 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 good for you. If you can't run or you can't wiggle your toes, go get in a sauna or something uh, uh, and sweat. Get that junk out of you. But anyway, Adam and Eve, so he got there and he took that, he took that shovel and dug down in that ground and food stuff come up to ate it. And then he then he shot a rabbit, and then he shot a deer, and then he got him a, a spear, killed, and they had to eat. They had to work. You know what Adam did? Adam didn't say I'm going to commit suicide. He said I lost paradise. I lost what I had. But bless the Lord, I'm going to start over and make the best out of what I've got. Look, nobody in here's got a perfect life. Nobody in here's got everything like you want it always. If you do, please. You're obviously overlooking something if you think that. Now look, you know what? You know what we can't do? You can't go back to last year, last month, the way things used to be. You can't. You can't. It's impossible. You cannot do it. But I'll tell you what you can do. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I tell you what you can do. Thank God in heaven. You can get up here this all this morning, get all that under the blood, pass, and start all over a brand new man, a brand new day, a brand new life. Here, today, you can start over and do that. That's good news for y'all. That's good news for you. That's good news for you. You listen? Job started over. Think about Job. Job had ten kids. I, I think... Um, Ten kids, three, seven boys and three girls, the other way around. Ten kids. And uh, he, he had them all, they were all healthy, all of them having a birthday party or something in their house. And they, Frank, where are you going? <laughs> Scared him to death. And he said, uh, he said this, Job, Job looked around, and the devil came after him. And Job lost, listen to this, Job lost his camel, he lost his sheep, he lost his herd, he lost his flock. He lost his income. And then somebody come running in and said, your kids were having a party and the roof fell in or something and killed all of them. They had ten, ten funerals. Ten funerals. At one time, lost ten kids. You talk about the bottom falling out. You think about, there's somebody in here this morning. You think, Brother Danny, I had a good life and then everything went crazy and my husband left me in my home and I lost my job and then I got cancer and then I, it just everything just been one. It just been one. Job had that. And he got balls from the top of his head to the sole of his feet. Can you imagine that? Uh, you ever had a ball? Uh, like, like a fever blister or something. And so sore you couldn't touch it all over his hand, down his leg. All, all, and Job, you know what Job did? The Bible said in all this, Job sinned not, neither charged God foolishly. Right. Now listen people, right. if you're having a bad time and your life's all messed up, You've lost a lot of stuff and you've lost your job, lost your money, lost your stocks and bonds, investments, whatever. I tell you what you better do. You better do like Job did. He said, Job looked up and he said, the Lord gives, the Lord takes away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. That's the right attitude right there. And finally Job's trouble was over with. And finally things smoothed out. And finally he bought him some more sheep. And finally he got him some more oxen. And the Bible said God turned the captivity of Job. And he had ten kids again. And he had a better life. You know what Job did? He said, I lost everything I had, but I'm starting over this morning. I'm starting over today. You may have just got out of prison. I don't know. A lot of folks in here, I don't know. You may have just got out of rehab. I don't know. Don't you let the devil tell you it's over. Don't you let the devil tell you that there's no hope for you. You get on this altar, you bend your knees, you say, God, I can't do nothing about my past, but bless the Lord, I can do something about today and the rest of my life. I'm starting over this morning. Brand new start. Do that today. Do it today. Do it today. Remember about that guy? Do you hear about that guy that got, and it was a runner, and he wound up, he lost one of his legs or something, got a prosthetic leg. And one of them had two of them still running races. Did y'all hear about that? Wasn't it two of them? That's, that's, that's the wildest thing I've heard in my life. Can you imagine? Not, I, can imagine I can't really imagine walking on two prosthetic legs. He runs races. You know what he did? He's like, I got both my legs cut off. Guess what? I'm starting over. I, you beat me on that last one. I'm starting over today. That's the attitude that you need to have this morning. I'm not going to just lay down, roll over, and die just because things went bad. 
I'm not going to sit and wallow in my self-pity and feel sorry for myself just because uh, you have failures in your past or you lost your job or you lost your health. You're going to rather say, Lord, if Job could start all over with what he lost, if Adam started over after he left paradise, if Noah started over with no house and no land, I can start over today at Shining Life Baptist Church and make something out of my life. Amen. Hey, today, and I mean today, David, there in when David's child died, he laid on his face for seven days, begging God, please, Lord, please. I don't know if you've ever been there. And my kids have been in the hospital a bit, having babies and one thing or another, but none of them's ever been like really, you know, hurt where I was where I was walking outside the emergency room saying, God, let them live. But I've been with a lot of people that was in that situation. I've sat in them little rooms at them hospital with many a person. With them rooms about this big, about eight or ten of them sitting in there. Them sitting there bawling and saying, God, please don't let my baby die. Please don't let my baby die. God, please, Lord, let it live. And it, and it didn't live. It didn't live. You say, well, God don't love me. No, you're wrong. He said, God love me, why did he do that? We don't always know the why. God let David's baby die. God let David's baby die. And you know what David did? He rose up, washed his face, went into the house of the Lord, and worshipped. And that was even his fault, that baby got struck. He started all over. And believe it or not, him and Bathsheba started off wrong. God wound up blessing them and giving them Solomon. I didn't write it. I'm just telling you what it says. Amen. Right. That's the goodness of God, brother. Amen. The goodness of God. He's so good, we can't even imagine how good He is. Amen. Woo! Hallelujah. I'm glad He loved me. I'm glad He helped me. I'm glad He lets me start over again when Amen. I'm on it. Hallelujah, people. It's good to know that God will let us start over. Amen. You might need to start over in your marriage. I don't know. Maybe you've been fighting like cats and dogs. Uh, and, and clawing each other's eyes out and saying you hate each other and everything else, good time. Start over. Wipe the slate clean. You know what you ought to do? Remember the little things when we was growing up? There's etch a sketch. And you remember the little thing? And they had a gray thing right here. We used to ride on them and everything right there. And then you go, whoosh, And it's clean. And them other little thing, maybe that was etch a sketch that you shook. Okay, what was that other thing you ride on? That was for most of y'all. Most of y'all's time. How many of y'all remember them little things? That's great, and you rode on them like that. But the etch a sketch, I think they invented something that you could write on and just shake it real good like that, and it all disappeared, and you start on. That's the way the Lord can do your record today. That's the way the Lord can do your record today. Amen. So I'm going to start all over, preacher. Good, good. Have some message this morning. Listen, failure is not falling down. Again, failure is not falling down. It's staying down. You learn that in football. You learn that in any sport. Failure is not falling down. Failure is staying down. The devil can't stop somebody that will not quit. A righteous man falls seven times, what the book says, and riseth up again. David got a portion. Peter. Or did he ever mess up? Here's Peter. I know, you, you're just like me. I've said before, man, if I could have been like them disciples and walked and seen Jesus do them miracles, I'd never, I'd never, it didn't stop them from doubt. Right. Every one of them forsook him and fled there when they put him on the cross. And Peter got mad because he took that sword and tried to whack that guy's ear off. Whack his Greek words that educated people like me know. That means he severed his ear from his head. And Whacked his ear off. And that guy's ears laying down there. And Jesus healed him. And Peter got down and said, Well, this, you're going you gonna to heal your enemies? We're all going to be killed. Heck with this. I, it ain't what I thought it was. Three, And you can get like that in church sometimes if you're not careful. If you're not careful, there'll be times when you... I heard a man stand up in church one time. He's mad. And I heard him when he said, I'll never step foot in this church or any other church. And stormed out the door. Took a guitar and left. He said, whatever happened to him, preacher? Oh, he ate them words, wound up pastoring and starting a church. Lord got a good sense of humor, ain't he? You know what? 
I'll tell you. Uh, Job said, I'm starting over. Noah said, I'm starting over. Peter went out there and sat down in the rest of Three years. I could have had me a nice house, car, but now and everything. Three and a half years out there chasing around. Now he's dead. Now we're going to. A little girl come up to him and said, May I help you, sir? And he said, Yeah. Give me a hamburger. She said, Is them tracks in your pocket? No. No, your business, what it is. She said, Somebody said that you was one of that. You know that man that got out here trying. For his life and that claims to be the Messiah. Are you one of his disciples? He said, blankety blank, no. What do you think about that? And cussed. He walked with Jesus three and a half years and cussed and said he didn't even know him. That's bad. That's bad, man. I don't even know who you're talking about. She came back to me and said, uh, Excuse me, sir. Somebody back in the kitchen said, you really want... He said, you give me my... The blank check, the blank, the blank, the blank, 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 blank. Sound like Snoop Dogg for a minute there. Don't know nothing but cuss words. Amen. Old stuff start coming back in Peter's head. And he said, give me my blanket and blank check. She said, The Bible said Peter walked out that day and they was leading him down from Pilate to Herod or one of the other back and forth. Here come Jesus. And the Bible said the Lord turned and looked on Peter. That's all it took. Because ain't nobody look at you like he, like he can. And Peter thought, God, what have I done? God, what have I done? And he ran out there and God was going to stomp somewhere and pray to bawled his eyes out. And Christ said, God, I'm sorry, God, I'm sorry, God, I'm sorry. He got things right with God. And so he's there when the Lord rose from the dead and they're all sitting around talking. And all the disciples were sitting around there and, and they all knew Peter cussed the night and Peter got right with the Lord. You say, well, didn't the Lord put Peter on probation? I'll tell you what he done. He said, uh, Peter, you love me? And all the rest of them said, uh-oh. Boy, he is going to chew him out. Oh, gosh, here it comes. And Peter said, yes, Lord, I do love you. So, yeah, whatever. Over cussing at the restaurant, saying you didn't know. He said, I do love you. And the Lord said, uh, feed my sheep. And they went, wow, is that all he's going to do? Peter went, Whew. They started eating another bite. He said, Peter, yes, sir. Do you love me? Yes, Lord, I do. You know the greatest thing you can ever say and mean it is I do love Him. I love Him this morning. I don't know about you. I love the Lord. I love Him. He's been good to me. I ain't been very good to Him, but He sure has been good to me. He said, yay, Lord, I love you. He said, feed my lambs. And then he looked at me and said, Peter, I knew it. I knew it. I wasn't going to get off that easy. Yes, Lord. Do you love me? Peter said, Lord, you know everything. You know I love you. Don't pay no attention to all them preachers on the radio trying to show you how smart they are. Talk about three words for love and agape and phileo and eros, you know, at the erotic love and phileo, brotherly love, Philadelphia, and, and agape. It, you know why I got Peter, uh, Lord asked Peter three times? Every time he denied him three times. And the Lord said, one time for each of them denials. Do you love me? Do you love me? Do you love me? Well, Peter got under the watch care of the church and they watched him for about a year told him he should sit down under a good pasture for about, for about two years and maybe they might let him take him to offer it. Nope. Nope. I didn't write it, y'all. I didn't write it. I'm preaching it. That's my job. Pre you want to preach or preach the Bible? You're in the right church. Amen? Listen, y'all. He, he said, Peter, now, you're forgiven, but you can't never do nothing else again. Put stipulation on him. Well, guess what happened? Uh, less than two months. Less than two months. They were all of one accord on the day of Pentecost. And the Holy Ghost came down in Acts chapter 2. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost. 
and begin to speak in other tongues and the Spirit gave them utterance. And the Bible said, they come, then my disciples come out of there like crazy people jumping up on car hoods and preaching all over town. And there was thousands and thousands of people there from every nation under heaven. And about that time, somebody looked up there and there was somebody going around. He said, I'll tell you right now. Ha, you bunch of sinners. Ha, you crucified the Lord of glory. Ha, but He's coming back again. And so I'm like, who in the world? I never heard such preaching in all of my life. Woo! And that, that little waitress out there said, I, I wouldn't walk across the street to hear him preach. I'm a Baptist. <laughs> I'll never have no respect for him. He cussed. It ain't been three weeks ago. He's in a restaurant cussing. And guess what? The Holy Ghost used Peter and 3,000 people got saved. That's how good God is unless you start all over again. Amen. Peter made a fresh start, buddy. I, oh, Peter, he was something else. He, you do a character study. Listen to Ruck. Character study on on Peter. You want to, it's amazing, absolutely amazing. Uh, he was. So, you know why we like Peter? He's so much like us. We can identify with that. And I'm telling you, he started all over and had a great ministry and wrote two books in the Bible. First and Second Peter. And preached till he died. I'm telling you this morning, you can start over. No matter how bad your past is, your future is spotless. It's spotless. And I won't say this and I'm through. Come on, girls. The first step to getting somewhere. Listen. The first step to getting somewhere is deciding you're not going to stay where you're at. I'm not going to keep doing this. I'm starting all over today. Maybe you're here this morning, you got a, a drug addiction, alcohol, I don't know, I don't know. I know it's everywhere you look. And I've good, got good news for you today. You can start over right here this morning. Let's stand by our heads with prayer. Our heads are bowed and our eyes are closed. Well, I'm going to play something. I wonder, this morning, no one's looking around, heads bowed, eyes closed. I just wonder, would there be somebody here this morning say, Preacher, Preacher, you was talking to me this morning. You don't know it, but you was talking to me this morning. And I need to make a new, fresh start. And I, I'm, I need to make a fresh start, Preacher. And I need you to pray for me. We're going to pray for you this morning. I'm not going to come to you. I'm not going to embarrass nobody, but I sure would like to just pray for you. Would you let us pray for you this morning? Just slip up that hand. Take it right back down. Anybody? God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. That's about five or six hands right there. Anybody else? Slip up that hand. God bless you, sir. I see your hand. Preacher, pray for me. We're not, not going we're not going to call you out or nothing like that. Just want to pray for you. Maybe there's somebody here this morning say, Preacher, I'm not a Christian. My life is a mess. I need to make a fresh start today. I need to make a fresh start. This morning ain't gonna get no easier. Ain't never gonna be a better time. Then right there, the Lord gave me this message for you. Start over. Start over. Heavenly Father, I pray right now in Jesus' name that you'd help these that need to come, and these that lifted their hands, and these others maybe that didn't or were afraid to, to do it. Lord, I pray that you'd help them to make that step out of that seat, get down here at this altar, put everything in the past under the blood, and start all over again for the glory of God. 
Do it, Lord, right now by the power of the convicting Holy Ghost of God. In Jesus' name we pray and for His sake. Amen. They're singing this morning. If you need to come, if you raised your hand or you didn't, you come right now. Come on. Come on. Just get any seat. Come on. Come on. Just get any seat. Come on. Others. Others. Here comes some more. Here comes some more. Here comes some more. Let's go. Amen. Come on, young lady. Young man. That's right. That's right. Let's pray with her. There you go. There you go. Yeah. Come on. Press start. Start all over. Right. Amen. Better make sure everything's right. Hallelujah. 
Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. Boy, it's sweet. Young people are praying through right like that right there. What a blessing. You know what I mean? Amen. It don't take God two seconds to save you. The second you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, that's how long it takes to get saved. I bawled my eyes out for about 30 minutes the night I got saved. But it didn't take the Lord that long. That's me. I'm puking out all that sin. I'm glad that He can save me. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Make a fresh start today. Brand new start. Thank God. Thank the Lord. Amen. Thank the Lord. You ain't got nothing to do no more important than what's taking place right here. Somebody's starting all over again. Hey man, hallelujah. I'll never forget that night. I got saved. Brand new life. Just like a newborn baby, buddy. Amen. You can't buy back your past. But you can live right from now on. You can. And nobody can stop you. Nobody can stop you from living right if you want to. Not even the devil. If you want to. Hallelujah. Thank the Lord. I love these are still praying. Don't forget that special, special service tonight. Maybe change your plans. We're going to have to be here. We'll be talking about AI, the Antichrist, the one world government, the mark of the beast. That'll be tonight, 6 o'clock. Then, uh, of course, we'll have a meeting with everybody going on the Virginia trip also tonight. Uh, had a couple kids wanting to go. I don't know how it's going to pack full the motel is. Uh, we got 16 rooms. Us the other church, but uh, we, I don't know. I mean, ain't going to tell nobody they can't go. We'll, we'll figure out something. Uh, maybe some need a little help. If you want to help with the bus workers, let me know as you go out this morning also. Don't forget that, okay? Amen. 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 People have been asking about the... Uh, the next trip we're going on will be uh, August 12th. August 12th on Friday night. The choir will be going to sing down in, in uh, Gastonia. Revival meeting. So put that down on your calendar also. August 12th. Charity Baptist Church. Gastonia. Back on the back burner there. Save that night. Uh, Friday night, August 12th. We're looking forward to that also. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Young man got saved, y'all. He's starting all over. Amen. Amen. Up our blood. Amen. God bless you. J Mac. Amen. God bless you. Y'all pray for this young man. Praise God. That's the smartest thing a young man can hold you, J Mac. 13 years old. You got a head start on me. I didn't get saved until I was 18. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. Y'all be sure to take this in for you. Hallelujah. Amen. All right. Amen. All right. We're just going to unhitch right now instead of dismiss. So everybody be friendly, fellowship a little bit. Be back prayer room tonight for men, 15 to 6 over here. Okay? All right. God bless you.